Hi there, I'm Andy, a moon chasing, manifesting, wander lover, and feel good aficionado. Consider me your woo woo best friend. This show is a sacred space for ideas, concepts, and modalities that might be considered taboo, but that I personally find a great magic in. In these conversations, my mission is to inspire confidence, worth, and mystical thinking in our modern world. Let's get into it, shall we? Well, hello, it's Andy, and okay. I'll be honest, I'm coming to you from the backyard at my new house here in Los Angeles. And the reality is we are awaiting our furniture delivery, which also includes all of my recording equipment for the pod. And so you're getting to be with me here in the yard in the sunshine. And so things are going to sound a little bit different today. And we're going to just go with it. And I I know you guys are amazing and are going to be fine with that, especially when you get to meet our guest for today. So it's really appropriate that we're entering into Taurus season. It's this beautiful spring season that we're upon And I'm here in the backyard with the birds singing and the butterflies flying by. And my guest is La Green Therapist, Diana Pimentel. And when Diana and I got together to have our conversation, I could see her on video. We do all of our recordings on video. And she was sitting there amongst flowers in nature And so now here I am amongst flowers and nature. So it's all very, very fitting as we go into this beautiful season of Taurus and the earthliness and the divine feminine that it represents in this moment of springtime. So from the backyard here in Los Angeles. So with all that said, I'm so excited to introduce you to Diana. She's a wife, a mother of three girls. She has five dogs and a cat woman after my heart with all of those amazing animals in her home. And she's dedicated to awakening consciousness, improving the quality of life, educating and raising the individual and collective energy frequency. And she does that through contributing her knowledge, her life experiences. She's a green chef and a green therapist. She's a heart healer. Her approach to therapy is one that is incredibly holistic. She's an NPL practitioner, a life coach, a sustainable and slow food advocate, and she has training in both meditation and yoga. She's a plant medicine practitioner. She's also connected to the world of ancestral wisdom, and she does starseed activation work as well. So much good stuff that we're going to talk about, and this episode is one that is quite emotional. Diana is a, such a beautiful show. She bears her soul. I will go ahead and let you know there are some conversations in which we talk about some things that could be traumatic or bring up some emotion and feeling for you. So I want to make sure you're, I'm prefacing that, that we are going to talk about some experiences in Diana's life that she went through that have really made her the magical woman that she is today. So if, uh, if you're in a place where you perhaps need to take a moment before you listen, please do that. There's so much wisdom, so much depth in what Diana has to share. And she's, she's truly a person who just loves the universe. She loves planet earth. She loves, she loves mama nature. She loves Pachamama and Gaia, the spirit of the earth. And she talks all about that with us. And you'll, you'll see and feel her light. I know you can't see it because we're here on audio on a podcast, but you will feel it coming through the conversation. So get ready, enjoy, go give my beautiful friend, Diana, a follow over on Instagram as well for more on her and her beautiful work. And here we go. 
Meet Diana, La Green Therapist. Okay, I'm here with Diana, and you can't see her, but I can see her, and she's taking a beautiful breath in prayer right now, and I love that that's how we're starting this conversation. Diana, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so grateful and happy to be here. Yeah, so. it's going to be a fun conversation. So before we get into all of the good stuff that you're up to, and there's so much good stuff that you're up to, I always open the show with a question about your astrological chart. So if you'll share with me your sun, your moon, your rising, maybe how that informs who you are a little bit. Okay, well, my sun is Gemini and my moon is Cancer and my rising is Leo. Ooh, I love um, it. Yes, it's um, it's quite a mix. And, um, you know, I don't have a lot to say about that besides, you know, I just, I know that communication is something that is part of me, um, you know, and that confidence, that Leo confidence of, you know, being the the center of attention, I really kind of don't mind it sometimes. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what kind of gives me the power and the courage to actually just kind of be here and be able to speak um, my truth. And so that's kind of what I really identify from my astrology. I'm not, I'm just learning kind of, you know, yeah. more about the astrological effect that my signs and the moon and the sun and how it all really kind of connects. Yeah. And it's just, it's really just mind blowing. Um, so that's kind of just as much as I know, but I know there's just so much more depth um, within that. And I, that's yes. why I follow you and I love everything <laughs> that you post because it's just awesome insight um, that everybody should be aware of. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel the same. And I, I you know, for, for, my, uh, for my website, I have really three women who have an incredible depth of knowledge of astrology that I'm constantly learning from. And when, when I, when my website started to, when we, we started to really shift in that direction, I knew I needed to lean on some women that had a further depth of knowledge than me. And it's been so incredible getting to it, just getting their perspective month over month of how it all works. And you, your signs. So I'm a Leo sign, so I definitely know that energy well. And then my mom is a Cancer, and my one of my sisters is a Gemini. So I feel like that was kind of the swirl of energy that I grew up in, that Gemini, Cancer, Leo. So, yeah, yeah beautiful. I love it. Okay, Thank so you. let's talk about you and the work you're doing. So when I, was, when I was taking a look at all of the things that you're up to, you're a healer, you're a holistic therapist, you're a wellness practitioner, and offer a variety of different wellness practices, and you're also an eco chef and a sustainability advocate. And there's something else I want to get into, and maybe maybe we'll talk about some of these pieces first. But then you're also a starseed activator, so I want to talk about that. I I love to hear about that and learn more about that. So tell me a little bit about how you found your way on the path to to who you are and, and to really um, connecting into all of these different modalities and practices? All right. Um, well, it's been quite a journey. I'm, I'm quite a crier here, so let me not, you know, get emotional. But it's, um, I started as an eco chef, really. I wanted to be a chef ever since I was a kid. And um, when I finally was able to do that, I met a friend just randomly at an organic um, shop that I was at, an organic farm, and she um, invited me to join her to a climate change um, conference um, with the climate reality. And I'm like, you know, what does food have to do with climate reality? I mean, mm. I had no knowledge of the, the connection between the food industry and the environment. And um, I went, I took this certification, um, you know, they accepted me. Uh, to my surprise, we came to Miami to take the certification with Al Gore, but I, w I came more for the weekend party than <laughs> for climate change, really. But then it was a very aha moment. I mean, it hit me hard in my heart. 
when I kind of saw the struggle that the planet Earth was going through. You know, I've always been a nature lover, even though I wasn't that aware and conscious or awoke about, you know, our, our connection with the Pachamama and Gaia. Um, so to me, it was just, I was heartbroken. I was heartbroken when I saw the devastation that, you know, natural catastrophes were causing all across the world and how climate change had an impact on people's lives. So I, I just said, what can I do to change this, you know, to help make uh, uh, people aware of the impact of their food choices? So that's when I started into you know, getting into the, the whole sustainability and uh, eco chef and holistic health coaching, connecting um, chemicals and the food industry to climate change and how we can just simply by shifting our diets, we could, um, you know, reduce contamination, reduce pollution, reduce um, you know, uh, our, our health risks. And just, there was just so many benefits associated to that. And then, um, then something major happened. Uh, my, you know, I, I was very well known in my country as the green chef. And, um, I tried to open up a business. I was selected by multiple, um, you know, like support entrepreneurship support companies that they kind of, it's like an incubators. My, my project was selected and they helped me to develop a business, to further my business. And I wanted to open a cafeteria at a school with these practices, wow. you know, totally vegan, totally sustainable, um, uh, just to reduce waste and reduce water usage and just educate the kids. And well, um, I did great in the, the entrepreneurship incubators. I launched my cafeteria with one of my best friends and that she joined me as well. And something happened along the way that I was going through really a lot of emotional stress. Me and my husband, me, I've been married for 16 years. We were going through a very stressful, you know, financial situation. We were going through almost, you know, getting divorced. Uh, I was totally alone kind of bringing up this business with my best friend. We really didn't have a lot of financial backup we really got into debt to be able to do that and things just kind of started going downhill and I was hitting rock bottom and it was just really tough and I just sorry I thought I was gonna get emotional well it's a it's a beautiful story and it's made you who you are. Yes. Um, I just held on strong to the light, you know, just had faith that everything was going to be fine. Um, the school did just uh, some, you know, kind of, I call it, they stabbed me in the back after we had an agreement. Um, they did something very nasty. They kind of took out everything after a Christmas break. They took out all, all my things from the kitchen and it was just, it was very hard. I couldn't understand. Um, you know, I sued them and everything, but that just made me and my best friend go into a deeper hole. Um, yeah. And she couldn't take it. She she committed suicide after mm. some time. Um, and thankfully, me and my husband got back together. Things started kind of getting better but i just went through a period of void for about two years i had lost my father after you know i just it was just like back to back yeah a lot of difficulties and sufferings and you know i'm just kind of a very strong person so i don't really share i didn't share this with my mom or my sisters who i you know lived in the states um so it's just been a lot of internal work of just getting out. So. <sighs> um, getting out of there. It's just, you know, I, uh, the light. I know I've always been light. I'm, I've, I know I have a mission to kind of bring the world light in, in new ways. I'm a visionary. I'm a pioneer. Um, I always start things that are not on the norm yeah. um you know i'm kind of just going against the current or so you so you think but i'm just kind of 
opening pathways that are just different, but are good for people. And I just hold on to that, you know, and it just holding on to God, Jesus, the light, faith, having trust in myself and in, um, in what I want, just keeping focused on what it is that I want for me and my family has gotten me here. And then the pandemic hit um, and, and I was just, I, I met these amazing women. Um, I belong to uh, some mandalas and it just, they kind of gave me life back. Oh, um, so good. They, uh, I started believing in people again because I kind of had lost faith in humanity. You know, I'm sure. just here trying to do good and bring good. And it was just not appreciated, not valued. And then I started working on self-love. It was just more of, okay, you know, forget about the people. It's how am I giving love to myself? How am yeah. I filling my own cup? How am I able to nurture myself and give that love that I want to give to others, give it to myself because I was just giving and giving and giving and giving. And, um, you know, you kind of drain yourself to a certain point. So getting to, to this circle of women just inspired me so much and gave me so much power back. Um, and that's when I got into this whole knowledge of the heart and the heart as a portal and uh, how we are literally just walking beams of light that are vibrating according to our emotions, according to our thoughts. You know, I've always been into paranormal stuff ever since I was a child. Yeah. Um, I've known that there's just something more out there besides this physical, tangible world. Um, because I've, I've just been very close to, to the spiritual, paranormal, you know, I don't know if we're going to get into that later, but <laughs> and so I've always been very into metaphysics and quantum energy and just, I wanted to know more and more about that. And, and, you know, life has just kind of put things on my lap, you know, and it's just more information and more information. I get all these this knowledge that to me sometimes it's like crazy, but then I see other people speaking the same language as myself, like yeah. you and the moon and the stars and the, the energy and, and it just kind of makes sense. And now I'm there with that. I found heart math. Um, and I fell in love because I could, I'm a science nerd as well. So I always like to kind of connect one thing with the other so that I can explain people and give them more of a, 3D uh, hands-on knowledge so they can put one thing with the other. And when I saw heart math explain the intelligence of the heart and yeah. how it has its own nervous system and how it really el emanates electromagnetic frequency, I was just, I'm just in love because now yeah. I can explain to people how we really, really vibrate from the heart. And every time we just center ourselves back to our heart and that portal that starseed portal, which is our heart, it's just, it makes life so much smoother. It just, everything kind of aligns and falls into place like a Tetris. And yeah. that's what I've been living ever since about a year and a half ago. Cause you know, I've always been that the green chef, the green therapist was born a few months ago. You know, this has all been oh, wow. kind of new. Um, this whole shift of career because it's kind of just, everything that I've known about sustainability and climate change and food security. And that's kind of what I've been always teaching people. And now I'm just talking about self and energy and being and just living from heart. I mean, I've always kind of said that because being part of the Pachamama and holding on to earth and being part of her obviously kind of also anchors from the heart but now I'm being more straight to like this is who you have to be you yeah. have to go by the heart yeah that intuition that gut you know and that and that is all connected with the the stars and the moon and the sun and we're just like a tree you know um we we go with with the earth you know and if we do that just everything seems to flow much yeah. more easily 
And yeah, and it's it's also connected. It's also connected. Whether it's whether it's the food we eat, the way we practice meditation or yoga, how we show up. There's there's a a thing I've been really spending a lot of time on and some of the courses that I teach and that's that universal consciousness and and because we're such as human beings we can be such heady creatures where we're spending all of our time up in our head brain we've been really focused on how do we reconnect to, to the heart brain and how how do we reconnect to the gut brain and when you start to when you start to do that it, it's such a shift and how you just how you understand how you understand your purpose and what's possible for each of us and how you how you do everything how you how you eat how you care how you love all of that so i i i I just love what you're up to now and how it's come from a place of a love for food first and then a connection into earth that was born from an experience that was clearly where you needed to be at that exact moment that you were there and then where you're going next with your with your healing work your wellness practices and your offer as a holistic therapist and a green therapist it's it's also cyclical and fits so well together totally totally i feel life is cyclical i mean it's we're we're in a constant spiral yeah and it's just beautiful if yeah. once we we see that um, totally, and it's all, I mean, in star seeds, star seeds is. Um, I feel that I'm just planting seeds of consciousness. Yeah. So tell and, us what um, a star seed is, Diana, so that those that s- don't know about it can have some understanding of what we're talking about. <laughs> um, well, literally, a star seed is basically like. Um, you know, of ancient origins, we're like ancestral beings that, you know, come here back to earth. Um, or at least that's what we're, you know, we're said. They're souls, you know, who have incarnated on earth to to bring the unconscious to conscious. You know, it's um, it's to lead the planet into this new world, new earth, based on love, compassion, and, you know, these high frequency emotions. Um, and I feel that it, I'm here for that. You know, we bring awakening experiences, um, you know, no more, no more war, no more terrorism, no more separation, no more killing, no more disrespecting, no more, um, disrespecting nature as an animal and ourselves. It's just, I, I want to bring love. Um, and I think that's that's what I I feel that I'm doing. And I, Starseed came to me because I am in this mandala movement, and I called one of my mandalas Starseeds, um, uh, and I called it Starseed Activators. And it was just beautiful the the people within that group. They were all literally people that are here to bring awareness and. Um, elevate the frequency and they're all healers of some kind and it's just beautiful that I'm able to now that I'm in that state of yeah. consciousness I am attracting I am literally yeah. bringing into my life all these amazing human beings who have this same purpose of leading the world into this new way of existing um, and creating and manifesting, knowing that we have the power um, when we kind of drop down from our mind to the heart. And that's, you know, when we get that coherence, um, just life is so much more pleasant. Yeah. And that's how Starseed Activators was born. I kind of said, um, that's what I am. I, I, I'm activating Starseeds. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And isn't it so, it's so, it's so true when we are, when we're on that frequency in which we are, and I, I, I think so much of it does start with self-love when we start to take care of self and shift out of those low vibrational emotions and feelings. And, and we can, we can 
we can do that when we put our attention on that ourselves. It doesn't, and I don't say that from a perspective of if you're experiencing anxiety or depression that you shouldn't seek out the help that you need, of course you should. But if we're in a place of just feeling irritated and frustrated and envious and ang angry, we can with a self-love practice start to shift into a place of joy and compassion. And, and then we start to attract in others who are vibrating on that same frequency. And you found that in your women's circle and it opened up something brand new for you. Totally, totally. I mean, I've always, I, I, I mean, over, when I meditated before I knew heart map, I would always feel this, this energy just kind of, I didn't know how, what to call it. I asked my meditation practitioner, what is that? He's like, oh, you have your heart chakra very, you know, very open. And I didn't understand it at that time because I literally feel some warmth in the mm -hmm. middle of my chest. And I literally feel like it's vibrating. I don't know. It's just, it's just something there in your chest. And when you're in that emotional state of coherence, thinking of love and compassion and appreciation and gratitude and just being grateful, it just, it, you really start emitting that electromagnetic frequency three feet from your heart and all over right. across your body. And that is that bubble of light that we all say, close your eyes in meditation and, you know, visualize, but it's hard to visualize because you really don't think you are that, but it's beautiful when you can see that yeah. um, tangible. And I think that's what now it's my mission to kind of tell people, you know, you're literally walking light beings that are vibrating and you need to just be conscious. And like you said, if we need help, like if we're in a depressive state or, you know, of anything like that, yes, seek professional help but also doing the heart lock-in technique is just breath work. That's why to me, breathing yeah. is key. I mean, I have three, ch I have three daughters and the one thing I tell them whenever they get upset about anything, I ask them to breathe. I tell them just breathe, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, at least three or five times. And then, you know, and then act. Um, and it's just, it's just magical. <laughs> It, it's it totally is it's it's definitely changed doing breath work has changed my my personal practice in such a special way i actually i was last night i so i'm i'm doing a, a kundalini teacher training right now and so every tuesday night we gather for about three hours with my teacher and he was talking last night about the the that kundalini energy inside of all of us and he said he said i i want to make it clear that it's we're not awakening an energy that wasn't there before it's always there it's just how we're treating our bodies how we're treating our minds how we're taking care how we're self-loving and then we have an awareness of an energy that always existed within us and you start to feel it and so as you're talking about that heart chakra vibrational state and and really noticing the warmth in your body when we're disconnected from what's going on with us day to day we don't notice when we have the potential to really open up the heart chakra for example and have that really kind of sparkly vibrational energy and you know the people that do when they walk in a room you can feel their energy as they come in a room and it's like okay yeah i <laughs> yeah. I, I see them <laughs> So, yeah, as I was in that class last night and he was talking about that kind of sine wave of energy that moves up our ch each chakra, uh, each chakra within our body. And he said, it's just it's just tapping into an awareness of what you're already capable of and what's already there. And that practice of connecting into the heart is such a beautiful way of doing that and 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 breathing and breathing. Yeah, it's, it's, I know it sounds simple for those that, you know, are listening, but in, in, in reality, it's really not that difficult. I was just actually trying to teach it to my mother-in-law's um, father. He's 86 um, because he says he has a, a, you know, some anxiety going on. And I was able to show him tangible, you know, how his cardiac rhythm really affects, you know, and how he can really just lower that and create that coherence when he breathes focused on his on his breathing 
And if an 85 year old, you know, he literally understood it and he was able to see it in the application because I have the little inner balance, um, uh, the, it's the, the, not the application, but it's, uh, oh my God, it's the, um, it's this thing you put and it measures your rhythm, your heart rate. It's, uh, it's the, the tool that they sell you so that you can actually yeah. train yourself for that. And I connected it to him and he was super excited. You know, he was like, oh, wow, I can, you know, shift my anxiety consciously by just going back to breath and connecting with a thought that brings, you know, gratitude or, or love. Yeah. And he was able to do it. And it was it was really nice to to help him lower his anxiety a little bit by just doing three minutes of heart lock in breath work. Yeah. It was really nice. And you could see so the science of it in the moment. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's that's kind of what I feel my calling is now. So, yeah, um, just bringing that awareness to people. And um, I'm really excited about that. So thank you for this space. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Oh, my gosh. So beautiful. So, OK, so. If someone wanted to, I want to go back to food for a moment mm-hmm. and that awareness that you found, okay, you spoke about Pachamama. So explain for someone who doesn't know, if someone hears that word and they're like, I don't, I don't know what that means. Let's, let's go there. What does Pachamama mean? Who is Pachamama? And so we'll talk about that first. And then I want to talk a little bit about the food piece and, and how someone might step into sustainability and, and the way that they eat if they've not considered it before. All right. Well, Pachamama is Gaia, Mother Gaia, um, in, in Quechua, in uh, a Peruvian, I believe, language, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and basically, by making more conscious food choices, we can be more sustainable. We don't have to, you know, be the recycling guru or the, you know, zero waste guru just by shifting our diet to uh, one meal a day towards a vegan, vegetarian um, diet, we can literally lower our carbon footprint. It's, you know, it's really that simple. We don't have to become vegan or vegetarian. I used to be completely vegan and I was like, you have to be a vegan, but now I'm like, no, you know, it's not for everybody. It's really just about um, environmental nutrition, you know, uh, what is most sustainable for you, buying local, Uh, trying to buy organic. When I mean organic, it doesn't have to be certified. It's just ask your local producer if they use pesticides. You know, like myself, I went to this strawberry farm here in Orlando and I asked them if they were, if they were organic and they're like, oh, we're not certified. I'm like, okay, but what practices do you use? Um, You know, do you use pesticides? And they're like, no, we don't, you know, we use just organic um, stuff. So I'm like, okay, so you're organic. You know, it does, you don't have to be certified. I just want to know that you don't use chemicals and that I could use and I could eat your strawberries perfectly fine, just, you know, picked. Right. So it's just about that being a, a, an aware and a consumer, like ask questions. Um, buying local is always the best way to go. Um, buying in the markets, uh, trying to reduce our uh, plastic uh, containers, you know, everything comes in wrapped. So try not to buy things that are wrapped, try to buy things that are out of their packet. They're not in a plastic bag. And if they come packed, try to set it to carton, something that you can recycle. And just these, these little um, actions on our daily day food choices can make a great impact, you know? And that's what I basically used to tell people. And I also would tell them that, you know, eating meat uh, literally kills more trees than, you know, using paper for your printer. Most people say, oh, save the trees, don't use paper, but one meat, you know, one pound of meat equals 3,500 trees. Um, you know, an equivalent to, uh, you can use paper for a whole year and it'll just save eight trees. Right. Something like that, you know? So it's just kind of getting informed, you yeah. know, get the information. Um, you don't have to just shift a hundred percent completely because it's not sustainable either. Like if you eat, um, I don't know, if you eat cow's milk every day, well try to just lower that a little bit and, or, or try to, you know, use some other kind of milk, like maybe oat milk, which is really cheap and really easy to access and just do kind of a 10% change. That's kind of what I say. Don't try to change your whole lifestyle right here and then because it's just not going to happen. You know, just kind of do a little shift here and there and every day this week change this and this week change the other thing. And then little by little, you'll make making more sustainable steps. 
And, yeah. you know, that's how you can do it with the food. And that's how you can care for the Pachamama and respect every little bit of her um, in every possible way. You can do composting. You can, you know, um, and just be a vegan for, for one day of, you know, the week. Um, yeah. and, and that can just do a good, 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 good deed and yeah. lower your car for it in many ways. Yeah, it's, it's a, I think sometimes it's a, it feels overwhelming to know where to begin. And I, I just love that approach of, you know, try, try this one day a week. Okay, now if you're doing it one day a week, maybe, maybe you find some recipes you really enjoy and there's some great things you find at your local farmer's market and you want to try this two days a week. And totally. now you love the farmer's market and you want to get more of your produce from there. And that's how it begins. Yeah, and it's totally, and not only for the Baba Chamama, you're also supporting the local economy, you know, you're supporting yeah. those, those entrepreneurs that are actually really making ethical choices and that are really focused on your health and the environment's health and they're just focused on a better future. And that's kind of what we want, you know, we don't want to support these big industries, we want to support our community and support yeah. the locals that are doing really caring for our health and for themselves and for the environment. Yeah. So it's a win, win, win. It's beautiful. Yeah. All right. Easy steps to get started for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about your, I mean, now we have to talk a little bit about your paranormal interests. So in that same class I was in last night, this question came up. Uh, a woman asked my teacher how to know if we are if energies that we're potentially feeling, how to know what they are or how to know what's what's happening. And she was saying, you know, I, I feel like I'm kind of having some experiences with angelic beings and I'm trying to get an understanding if that's what's really going on. And he said, he said, when you start to vibrate at a certain frequency and you start to kind of step into that particular plane, then those beings that are hanging out on that plane you can then come into relationship with. And he said, sometimes it's going to be personally impersonal, and sometimes it's going to be impersonally personal, where that angelic being you might be experiencing is one you know, and then sometimes it will be one you don't know, but ultimately they're all there for the greater good. So that was his explanation, and I really loved it. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I, I, I get that. Um, I'd love to hear how you kind of found your way into that experience and that interest and what your thoughts are on that. Well, it wasn't that beautiful as you make it sound because, you know, I don't think I was there in that frequency and that sure, vibration sure. at that time. He's had a lot um, of, he's, he's older than we are. So he's had more time to kind of sort it out. So it was, you right. know, he's well, an elder. Well, um, my experience started at a young age um, and it was more of a auditive um, kind of and physical I would just my dad he was very connected in just I don't know weird ways you know here in my country in Dominican Republic there's all kinds of you know how do we know what I don't want to call it like um, black magic but it's really it's you know it's not black magic it's just there's a lot of card readers um, and back then that would be seen as, as bad or, you know, it doesn't come from the light. Um, either which way, when my parents got divorced, my dad, you know, he would always, spirits would come to him and he would just speak to them randomly. Like he would just blank out and he would just leave the room, you know, and I wouldn't understand it. I was what, six, seven, eight years old. My nanny um, would say, that's not your, you know, that's not your dad. He's in another dimension. You know, he's, he's just talking to somebody else. And I'm like, okay. Um, anyways, we went to a farm one day to, he wanted to have my cards read for, you know, for some reason. Um, and on our way to reading the cards, uh, I was horseback riding. Um, we were at the farm and my nanny just kind of dropped to the floor. You know, she just, she just, um, fainted. And um, as she fainted, I was like questioning, you know, I ran to her and I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? And she just opened her eyes very abruptly and she was very, very dark. And um, she just, you know, she got into this weird position and she was just moving in weird ways and they had to hold her down. And the thing is, we got to this lady's house, which had a bunch of candles and pictures everywhere um, of, you know, good spirits and 
gotten all those periods that I didn't know. And then this, she started speaking in like um, a different voice and she was just mentioning a whole lot of things that she would just, she was not supposed to know, you know, uh, private stuff sure. that she couldn't possibly know. So then at that moment, I was just very intrigued of how does this person that does not know my family um, very, you know, to this death has this information. Um, and then that's where my journey into the unknown and curiosity started. Um, you know, I would read Dolores Cannon. I would read just um, things, metaphysics about quantum physics and just kind of energy and frequency and vibration and how everything is kind of related to each other. And then I had some more experiences with friends of mine that would, you know, have those angelic experiences here um, messages sent to, you know, from past away to their loved ones here and now, mm -hmm. like one of my best friends, she does that. Um, she's now a shaman. Back in those days, we were not a shaman at all. She was just the normal 3D person. Um, and that's how it started. You know, I just have, I've had multiple experience of such that yeah. had led me to believe that there's just so much more. And then recently I've been taking this course about angels oh, and how to wow. be a, um, a, it's called Maestra de Angeles. Um, it's a teacher of, you know, how to be able to hear our, our angels and, you know, tell people that, you know, there are here to help us. They're here to guide us and, but they, you, we have to ask for their help. And, how we can know that it's them that are there. Um, usually we get this really warm feeling in our hearts and mm -hmm. we get emotional, like, you know, we feel like we're being held um, or our, our hairs kind of just pop up oh, yeah. and we just kind of feel warm. Um, if it's a cold kind of standing up a hair and you kind of just feel iffy, it's not a good entity, you know, it's just not something that's there to help. So, you know, and, it, and if it's negative talk, judgmental, critical, it's not angelic, you know, it's not from the light. It's just because they would never, never make you feel anything less than love. Yeah. Um, so and, if, and if you have that experience, how do you, okay, if you notice that's happening, what is your way out around out of that? How do you like ask that entity to go on its way? Oh, I say that only the light is allowed to come and uh, surround me and my space and that whatever is here, um, you know, should go and find its way, like literally. And I just say a prayer and connect to my heart, you know, I just know that way. and send it on its way. Really, you yeah. know, it's. I used to kind of be afraid because I've seen both good and bad and I used to kind of was, I was really closed. I just, I didn't want any of it. Um, but now I know my power and I know that I am light and I can really just step my foot down and be like, mm -mm -mm, no, you're not allowed here. You know, this is, this is my space. This is my light bubble. And, um, and yes, there's energy vampires that are people you know, and that sure. too, you, you just, you just stand your ground, stay positive, stay in your light and just anchor to that. And yeah. that is the best way to eat, to repel both 5D and 3D. Right. <laughs> right. No matter which dimension you're on, not yeah. having it if you're coming with anything but light. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah I feel it. that. What a, what a way to, to have your first experience that that trip to the farm for the card reading and it, I, from that point forward it's like okay uh, any anything could happen i mean i'm sure at that moment as a child you're like okay this is this is how things could potentially go i'm i'm sure i probably i i, I used to try to prove on my eighth grade class that spirits existed they used to call me ghostbusters <laughs> Um, and I'm sure I probably opened a whole bunch of things because, you know, as a child and being curious, I did not know the power I had with energy and with, you know, opening portals, looking at myself in the mirror or doing rituals, you know, using because I know I did. I used to do potions and stuff and God knows what I invented, you know, or what I opened or what I did. 
But now I'm aware of that because at one yeah. point somebody asked me, you know, what did you do when you were a kid? I mean, and I'm like, uh, I, I don't know. I did a lot of things <laughs> um, <laughs> because I was just curious. Um, but now I know that we are totally light and, you know, the dark is always going to be there. And in order for us to even be more light, we have to go through that darkness. Um, you know, there are yeah. those that cannot go through it alone and that they, they need to be held. And there are those that I feel like myself that, you know, have that power to just move from that, past that, and just feed off of that and shift it into light and yeah. be able to empower others to be able to get out of that as well. Wow, yeah. this is so much information that I'm getting <laughs> here as well. <laughs> uh, it's, it's I, I love this conversation. I love it so much. And... Yeah. It's uh, it's so important for people to hear because it's uh, we all, especially coming out of this last year, we've all we've all experienced something that feels hard on the, on the soul, this last year, in totally. some capacity. Whether we lost friends or family or whether we lost jobs, we've all been through. We've all been through it. So. It's through these hardships that we get creative, and yeah. anchor. If, you know, if and only we anchor to that light, because I know that a lot of us stay within that victim, you know, uh, life is just hard on me and I'm, I just can't get out of there kind of mentality. And and I know people don't like hearing this, but this is also truth. We are responsible for our own selves and we are totally capable and able of shifting from that mindset towards that, you know, instead of that fixed mindset, towards that growth mindset of, yeah. I can get out of here. Even if I may need help, I need to get that help, yeah. you know, but I want to get out there and, you know, and have that disposition and that intention to get out of there. Because it's like, I tell my clients, you know, I can do only so much for you. Yeah. You know, I can only give you so many tools and I can only, I can take you to the water, but I can't force you to drink it. Yeah. You know, you have to do the work yourselves. And a lot of people don't like taking responsibility of that because, you know, it's good to blame others and just, sure. you know, um, and I know this might be tough, but it is tough love. Yeah, it's important. It's so important. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to take us to our five closing questions. I've loved this time with you. It's been so special. So special. Okay. Likewise. Yes. All right. So the first question we're doing five questions at the close of every episode for this five year that we're in. And I've just loved getting to know more about the guest of the show through these five questions. So here's the first one. Tell us about an object or charm that is special to you. Okay. Definitely my angel cards, my star seed cards, <laughs> um, my uh, Shungite necklace that I wear um, at all times just to, um, make sure my energy is clear yeah. and I repel all the electromagnetic frequencies that are constantly around us. Yeah. Those are like my, my go-to objects that are very, very special to me. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. What is a book that changed your life? Well, one, I cannot say just one. I mean, it's just been so many of them. But I'm going to mention the, the ones that have really impacted me. The 5 a.m. Club, I mean, mm -hmm. by Robin Sharma. That has been a constant um, eye-opener in many, many ways. Um, also, Extreme Ownership. That's kind of how I, I am taking total responsibility. And I've taken total responsibility of my life. Um, also, Mindset um, has also been one that, you know, it's great to know how once you thought you might have a growth mindset and really sometimes you may not and that i saw when i read that book and there's just so many others like the path to love the five agreements um and so on and so forth yeah yeah constantly reading will constantly keep us on the path to staying open so oh and the green witch is a recent one okay. which is Lovely. Oh, I'll have to, I'll have to get that one. I, I had a chance to see Robin Sharma speak like two years ago and man, such power, such power yes. in his message. Love it. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. Tell me about an experience or moment that changed your life in a profound way. 
Yep, that first time I had that paranormal experience, yeah. I mean, with my nanny at the farm, with my dad, that was just like, okay, there's just so much more out there in the world that we're not being told. Yeah. And that's where my, jo- my journey of curiosity into the 99% of the universe is, is what we really are lacking. We only know 1%, part tangible. And but that 99%, it's what just lures me in. And uh, that's what really changed my life in a profound way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, a, what a way to get awakened to what's really out there potentially. Yeah. 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 Okay. What is something that you do for your health and wellness? Yoga. I have uh, my back. It's, it's not all that great. I fell when I was a child riding horses. So yoga is a must. Uh, meditation, breath work, rituals, um, just intentional, you know, setting intentions and cleansing rituals and things like that. Uh, grounding, whole lot of grounding, nature bathing. When I mean nature bathing is I leave every weekend to some cabin or something, um, you know, far away in the river, getting involved in the rocks and just being in nature. Um, and those are like, you know, things that keep me sane and healthy and well. <laughs> oh, so good. I need more nature bathing in my life. Gonna make that yes. happen. Yes. Yes. Okay, tell me about a moment that you knew magic was real. That moment when I met my alchemist family, that mandala family I spoke about, um, you know, they just, uh, they gave me my power back and um, I started living my life according to my highest vibration, Um, you know, and it's just, everything started manifesting. I was living, I'm living my dreams in reality. I'm literally just co-creating everything that I want to manifest. And I'm not worried about how I just, I'm focused on just getting there and trusting the universe that they're doing their work and I'm doing my work. And I think the best advice I can give so that people can see that magic is trust, 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 trust. And I would recommend a movie that just start that just that's out. I don't know if you've seen it, Raya and the Dragon, the Last oh, Dragon. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. I'll have to go watch it. I recommend it because the message is just absolutely beautiful. When you trust in your power and in others, everything just shifts. Mm. So it's you know, and another one that I could recommend is Soul. To me, every oh, adult yeah. needs yeah. to watch Soul. It's just yeah. beautiful as well. So that's how magic starts happening. When you start connecting with your soul and, and you start trusting in that power, you just literally magic things co-create magically. Yeah. Oh, so beautiful. I have loved this time with you. Thank you so much Likewise. for sharing your story with me and the work that you're doing. If someone wants to find you and wants to learn more about your work, how would they find you? Well, I'm a kind of a little off social media, but you can totally find me on Instagram, LA Green Therapist, La Green Therapist, my website, lagreentherapist.com, and directly my email, Diana at lagreentherapist.com. I will always, always, always reply um, as best as I can. I, I love it when people you know, I love to help. So anything that I can do, I'm here. Beautiful. And thank you so much for opening this space for me to share. It's just very exciting. Very, very exciting. So grateful. So much love to Diana for joining me today and to each of you for being with me on this journey with this show thus far. Thanks for being with me here in my backyard today in the beautiful springtime weather with the birds and the butterflies and the bees and all of the magic of Mother Nature being with me for this episode. I really am so grateful. And I'll be back again next week with a solo episode I've had so many beautiful questions coming through via email, DMs, lots of different ways. And so we're going to do a little 
Ask Me Anything episode. And I'm excited to get into your questions and just give you some of my thoughts on some of the things that kind of land in the inbox more regularly or in the DMs more regularly. And with that said, I want to just extend my gratitude to each of you who has sent me a message about the show thus far. We are so proud of how it's coming together. The reviews mean everything to us. I will be back to reading your reviews next week once we're back set up in the studio, our brand new home studio here in Los Angeles. And in the meantime, if you have not yet left us a review, please do so. It really helps us to get the word out about the show. You can, of course, follow us over on Instagram at yourwoowooBFF, or you can follow my page at WeeWeeGirl. Thank you so much for your time, your love, your support, and I'll see you again next week.